Thank you for joining us tonight for our Crosstalk devotional on this Wednesday evening. We've all received invitations, invitations to a wedding perhaps, or a graduation, maybe a birthday party or shower. The invitation comes in the mail and it invites us to a special event. I want us to know tonight that our God is a God who invites, invites us to be in relationship with Him. And it's an invitation that's gone out to the entire world. When we use the word invite, it can mean two different things. Sometimes we may talk about a place as being very inviting, which means it's comfortable to us. But other times we refer to inviting as someone has invited us to sit down with them, to maybe come over to their house. God, when we talk about the word invite, is both. He is both lovely, he's beautiful, he's amazing and awesome in power to sit down with, uh, to be around and in relationship with, but also to have him be with us, to come and to, to be together. Two forms of invitation, both represented in our relationship with God. I want to speak about one of the invitations of God that's found in the book of Isaiah. There are two great invitations and I've called tonight's crosstalk the great invitation looking at Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18. We'll look at the second one next Wednesday evening, but this is one of the most profound, greatest of invitations that's seen in all the pages of Scripture. It's an invitation that we've heard and that we're familiar with. It's called the great invitation. Notice, first of all, the invitation of God says in Isaiah 1 and verse 18, come now. The whole first chapter of Isaiah is a courtroom scene. God has called, hear, O heavens, listen, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. He calls all of his creation to, be, to bear witness, to be a jury, to give testimony. He says, hear, O heavens, listen, O earth, for I have spoken, I have raised children, God says, but they've rebelled against me. And then he says, the ox knows its master, the donkey its owner's manger, but my people don't know. They don't even understand. And from the top of their heads down to the sole of their feet, there's nothing but wounds and sores that haven't been cleansed. 
that haven't been washed, that haven't been bandaged or soothed with oil, God is stating the nature and condition, the spiritual condition of his people and us without God. A world without God is like compared to a body with wounds that haven't been cleansed, haven't been bandaged, haven't been soothed with oil. And the Lord brings this arraignment against his people. He says, I raised you up, but you have rebelled against me instead of worshiping God, instead of giving glory to God, instead of dedicating their lives to him, living their lives for him, their hearts, their possessions, their futures, all that they had. Instead, what they chose to do is leave God out. They refused to worship him. They exchanged the glory of God for created things to worship. And in this verse, he says, come now. We could translate it another way. Come now, let us, let us end the matter. Let us settle this matter once and for all. Come now, the NIV says, let us reason together. And here we find that as God says, I've raised children, I've brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. Here we see God saying, I'm, I've, I've brought you into this courtroom, but here his indictment is replaced with forgiveness. Here in this courtroom, before a jury ever gives verdict, before a judge ever lets the gavel fall and judgment is given, he, he offers an invitation. Can we settle this matter? Before we ever have to finish this in court, can we get this right between you and me, God says to his people and to this world? Just as we have all received an invitation, most of the times, at the close of that invitation is a, these initials RSVP. RSVP is French and it just simply, it's an initialism that's been carried over into the American language that just means please respond. It's, it's not used in, in France much anymore, but it's very well known around the world and in the English language, RSVP, please respond. It is our opportunity now to say, yes, I'm going, or no, I'm not. God has given an invitation. As Jesus stands at the door and knocks and says, whoever will open this door, I'll come in and eat with them and they with me. It's, it's an invitation, whosoever will. Who will accept it? Yes, I'm going, or no, I'm not. I heard of a, a European couple that had made their way as migrants to the U.S. They had a deep European accent. They received an invitation to a wedding one time, and at the bottom it said RSVP. Not being familiar with the ways in America and the customs, the man spoke to his wife and said, Wife, what does it mean, RSVP? Speaking in his deep accent, he looked at it, he scratched his head, and then he said, Wife, I know what it means. And he said, RSVP means remember, send, vetting, presence. The couple had made a mistake. They imagined that RSVP was a demand for wedding presents instead of recognizing that it was purely an invitation, a free invitation for all. And we too make that mistake. This world makes the mistake. God's great invitation given to so many and yet they instead translate that into a demand. It's a, it's a free invitation given to you and me, and we must choose how will we RSVP. Yes, I'm going. No, I'm not. To this answer to this great invitation of God. Notice also the intimacy of God that's seen here in this passage, verse 18 of Isaiah chapter 1. Let us settle the matter. Come now, God says, let us settle the matter, says the Lord. When it comes to matters of faith, matters of accepting this invitation, we're not going to meet with a large legislative body. We're not going to stand before a, a large jury. We're not going to stand before any group of people to negotiate this out. Let us reason together. In matters of faith, we're not going to stand before a business. There's over 65,000 businesses in the city of Dallas 
great global leaders, 59,000 small businesses that exist. We could walk into any one of them to appear. But when it comes to matters of faith, we're not going to any of these places. We are going to sit down with God. When it comes to p- between our relationship with God, it's not going to meet with an organization. It is one-on-one with God. He says, come now, let us, let us reason together. It's an invitation to sit down with God, to sit down and dine, if you will. Think about how amazing this is that God would take the initiative to even offer this great invitation After all, he's raised children, but they've rebelled against him. They don't even know who he is. They've rejected him. And yet, before before the verdict is called, he extends the hand to let there be peace between each other. This is the very heart of who God is. God is a very inviting God. A God who offers a personal invitation He's done with the separation between his people and him. He wants there to be a unity, a relationship. The Lord says, I, I've been their father. I've nurtured them. I've raised them, but they've forgotten me. And yet here as this loving, precious father in this scene, just like the father, the prodigal father, the, waiting for the prodigal to return home, just like a father sympathetic with his children, having compassion on his children, so God, our father, who's nurtured us, who's raised us, extends this great invitation to whosoever will. Come, sit down. Before there's a a verdict, let's reason together. An amazing thing that, it is an absolutely amazing thing that God would even entertain the thought of pleading with mankind to sit with him and reason this out. God, the creator of the universe, God, the one who made all that around, that's around us, God who made you and me, says, come now, let us reason. He gives this great invitation. It's the same invitation that Jesus gave to Paul on the road to Damascus. Lord, who are you? Paul said. Saul responded back in the light. Who are you? And Jesus responds, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. And before there can ever be the first sermon that Paul would preach, before he can become a missionary, before he can do anything for God, he must first sit down and let us settle the matter with God. What is there to settle after all? What is the issue? What's the problem? Well, the issue is that there is a separation between God's people and him, There's a separation when there is sin that keeps us from a walk with God. God wants that separation gone. Come now, let us settle the matter. Isaiah says it like this in Isaiah 59, 1. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. He invites us to sit down, and at the same time he says, his arm's not not too short. Not, doesn't have, he's, his arm has the power to save. His arm has the capability and might to do what he needs to do so that we can be saved and have a relationship with him. You've, I've never heard in all my life someone who has walked with God, who has accepted God's invitation. I've never heard someone who is in a relationship with God on their deathbed saying, oh, how I regret ever settling the matter with God, ever having a relationship with him. I've never heard anyone who's walked with God through a relationship with Jesus Christ on their deathbed saying, please don't follow my example. Please, this is such a mistake. No, it's the exact opposite. Those who have walked with God, who's accepted his invitation, who have come to, to reason this out with God, at their deathbed, they, they encourage others, please be faithful to God. Please hear his invitation. They, and I think the, the truth for us is that there will never be a day that we regret it, walking with God, accepting his invitation. If you were to travel to South Georgia Island, it's about 800 miles east of the Falkland Islands in the South Atlantic, 
It's a place called Grit, Gritkin, and there is an, an abandoned Norwegian welling station that's there. Uh, the famous explorer Ernie Shackleton is buried there on that island. But there close to the seashore is a tiny little Norwegian church. If you were to visit that church, walk through the doors, it's been restored. There as you push through the door and on the east wall, hundreds of miles, this little church from anywhere, there on the east wall it reads in the Norwegian language, come now, says the Lord, let us reason together, let us settle the matter. At the bottom it says in, in a different language that there can be forgiveness of sins for those who will come to him, for those who will accept that invitation. Notice finally the imperative of God. Notice he says, come now, let us reason together. Verse 18 continues, though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are as red as crimson, they shall be white like wool. Before any man, any woman can serve God before they worship God and pray to God and have relationship with God, they must first get right with God. That's the imperative. That's what God is after in this reasoning together. He's called a courtroom scene together to, to bear witness and to give verdict. But before that verdict, he says, let's settle this matter. It doesn't need to finish out in court. Let's reason together because even though your sins are scarlet, they'll be white as snow. And even though they are red as crimson, they can be as wool. Who can do this? Who has the ability? Who has the arm, the all-powerful arm to give salvation except God and God alone? Through the blood of Jesus Christ, who, who can take that which is red, like scarlet, and, and cleanse it and bleach it so that it's now white? No one else but God can do such a thing. Only God has the power through the blood and sacrifice of Jesus Christ to cleanse us. To be able to say that though your sins are crimson, they shall be as wool. You see, at the heart of this invitation, this great invitation of God, is the cross. How would, you, how would God go about cleansing us? How would he make our sins that are scarlet as white as snow, he would do it through a sacrifice, the sacrifice of his son on the cross. He would take that journey to Golgotha. He'd be hands pierced to the cross, his feet pierced to the cross, blood flowing from the scourging. He would breathe his last and he would say, it is finished. And when he uttered those words, it is finished, saying that this cleansing that God promised, sin, scarlet, now white as snow, it's done for all who receive this invitation. Notice that God doesn't downplay our sin. It's, it's real. It's red like scarlet. It's, it's crimson. It's shaded with, with years and years of sin, not just mine, not just yours, but the sins of the whole world. He doesn't downplay it, and we shouldn't either. We should be honest with God confessing our sins, confessing who we are to God. We don't downplay it. God didn't downplay it either. What God did is not ignore our sin, but state that even though it's that red, there is the ability for it to be cleansed as white as snow. The ability for us to, to walk a new life, to be a new creation, to have a new page of life, if you will. Years ago, when books were made, they would often use leaves, a, a flattened leaf, dried leaf to be the, the page. And, and you would turn that leaf and there'd be a clean page to start a new aspect to the story. And when we come to Christ, accepting that great invitation, we too have that new leaf with God, walking hand in hand with him. We have now accepted his invitation. We have now reasoned together. Our sins have now been cleansed. They are as 
white as snow. That's something that only God is able to do through Jesus Christ. Our best intentions can accomplish that. All the promises that we make through the years, the mountain of promises can't make us clean like that. Any suffering or pain we may go through cannot cleanse us like that. Time can't cleanse us. White as snow. Death won't remove our sins. Only the work of Jesus on the cross can ever cleanse us, can ever make us white as snow. The power of sin, the shame of sin, the guilt of sin, the domination of sin, the terror of sin, the pain of sin can all be taken away. When we come and reason, we accept the invitation to reason. This happens at baptism. Many who are watching tonight have been baptized, and this serves as a reminder of that great invitation that you accepted at one time when you reasoned together with God, and you accepted that invitation to be baptized into Jesus. But there's others that are watching that will watch perhaps one day that have not been baptized. Why ignore the invitation, the greatest invitation to have ever been sent out beyond anything having to do with a a wedding, a birthday, a graduation. Even if someone were to have an invitation to visit the president himself, it wouldn't compare to this, the greatest of invitations to come and sit down with God, reason together, settle the matter once and for all, accept his invitation, be cleansed of our sin. Whenever we come and accept this invitation and we're baptized, We really do have a break from the past. We are raised to walk a new life. Come now. Let us reason together. Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. You know, God really does want the separation that exists between us, the world, others, and him. He wants that separation to be gone. And he's made a way for that separation to be done with once and for all. A father and his little boy were in London, and they were once looking out a a stained glass window inside of a church. And as they were looking out, they saw a parade of of red-coated British soldiers marching along in their scarlet jackets. There in the church, the boy and his father looked through the stained glass window down below. As they were watching the parade of these red-coated British soldiers marching by, the little boy said, Daddy, look at their beautiful white uniforms. The father said, Son, they're not white. They're scarlet. They're red. No, no, said the little boy. They're not red, they're white, they're pure white. The father, in astonishment, stepped back and realized that they were both looking at the parade through stained glass. The stained glass was was red and white. And the little boy was looking at the parade through the red part of the stained glass, which made everything appear white. But the father was looking at the uniforms through the clear glass and was able to see that the the uniforms were indeed red. He took a step backward and he saw the stained, the red stained cross. And in the glass that caused the uniforms to appear pure white and a part of that glass that caused the uniforms to appear scarlet red. At the below was written in Latin a phrase that means redeem the world. You see, when Jesus sees us, he sees us through the eyes of the cross. We've come to him, we've accepted the invitation. And at one point he sees us through the clear glass. He sees us red like crimson. We, We need to get right with him. But once we come to him and we accept his invitation, he sees us through the red of the cross. 
And through that red cross, through the cross, he sees that we are white, pure white, because he has indeed made us as white as snow. The crimson's gone. It's now as wool. That is his great invitation to you, to me, his invitation to the world. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for this great invitation that you sent out so many years ago, hundreds of years before your son was even born, even would go to the cross. Father, thank you for this great, great invitation. Father, thank you for taking our sins, calling them what they are, but also making them white, pure white, as white as snow. And Father, help us to encourage others to sit down with you, to accept your invitation and to reason together, to settle the matter. Father, thank you for calling us into such a relationship that you would even entertain the thought to reason with us. Who are you, Father, that you should even have to? You are the creator. You've made all things. You've reared us. We're the ones who have been in rebellion. But yet, Father, you in your mercy, said, come, let us sit down and reason this out. Father, thank you for the forgiveness through the blood of Jesus. Thank you for seeing us through the cross. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Still have peace. I still have.